Okay, in this video we're going to do problem set 6, and we're going to start with the first problem here, chapter 10. Uh, it's a problem about sporting goods manufacturing, uh, looking at uh, different, uh, different set of designs for golf balls, and uh, so let's read the problem here. Problem 1. A sporting goods manufacturing company wanted to compare the distance traveled by golf balls produced using four different designs. Ten balls were manufactured with each design and were brought to the local golf course for the club professional to test. The order in which the balls were hit with the same club from the first tee was randomized so that the pro did not know which type of ball was being hit. All 40 balls were hit in a short period of time, during which the environmental conditions were essentially the same. The results, distance traveled in yards, for the four designs are stored in the golfball.xls file. Okay, let's look at the uh, golfball.xls file. Uh, it, this is it right here, golfball.xls. And we see we've got uh, four different designs here, uh, ten, ten observations, ten, ten hits per uh, design. And these are the distance in yards. So, let's see what the first question is. Question A. At the 0 0.05 level of significance, is there evidence of a difference in the mean distances traveled by the golf balls with different designs? Okay, so we've got a hypothesis here of uh, H, H, the null hypothesis is that uh, there is no difference uh, in yards and mean yards uh, for um, between the four designs, and the null hypoth or the alternative would be uh, just the opposite of that, which would be uh, it is not true that there is no difference, or there is a difference uh, in yards mean yards uh, between um, uh, one or more pairs of designs. Okay, so uh, the alternative is that there's at least one, there's at least two designs that are significantly different than each other. Okay, and so uh, what we can do now is uh, we can do, excuse me, we can do, uh, we can do an analysis of variance. This is an analysis of variance problem, and we can uh, test to see if there is a, a, a significant difference in these four designs. So uh, there are a couple of ways we can do analysis of variance. Uh, one way is we can take advantage of the uh, what is offered in Excel, and that would be in the under the data tab and uh, the uh, under analysis of variance. So it's uh, over here. It's I can make my spreadsheet a little bit bigger, wider here, and we see it's this analysis tab here. And, and it's, it's uh, so we select the data analysis tab here. And um, let me cancel this. Now, I just want to point out to you, if you do not have a data analysis tab here, then you need to go to File. This is if you don't, don't have that tab there. Uh, file add-ins, I'm sorry, file options, and then this thing pops up, and you go down here to add-ins, click add-ins, and uh, down here, manage Excel add-ins, manage Excel add-ins, click go, and this thing pops up, and you want to make sure that the analysis tool pack checkbox is checked. Okay, that's the one we want. So click OK, and that will uh, enable us so when we look at data here we get an analysis a data analysis button here so I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna do ANOVA single factor the first one and I'm gonna click OK 
and this thing pops up and we need to select uh, the input range that's not quite right it's a1 through d11 and uh, it's grouped by columns and uh, the labels are in the first row our significance level alpha is 0 0.05 and for the output range uh, we have the option of putting it on the same worksheet as the data itself and so we're going to do that click output range and then we need to click over here we need to make sure that we are in this cell I'm going to delete that and I'm going to put my output uh, right here right there F13 and that way uh, if I need to adjust the columns with the columns it's out of the way of this if I need to uh, uh, wrap any of the rows or anything it's out of the way of the rows here so I'm gonna click OK and this is what appears this is our single uh, factor analysis of variance and we can um, we have a uh, uh, now so the question is do we reject the null hypothesis uh, and we reject the null hypothesis if if either our p-value is much is less than 0 0.05 and we can see our p-value is less than 0 0.05 in fact it's 0 0.000 uh, 5028 uh, we can actually see how small this number is by clicking here and switching over to a um, uh, general number format if we extend out the number format extend out the decimal points decimal places we see this is a very small number so that's below 0 0.05 so we would reject the null hypothesis in other words this is this is true okay. uh, another way to another way to uh, know if we need to if we can reject or not is if the F statistic that is calculated is greater than the F critical which we look up okay and so uh, why don't we just see where this F critical comes from to begin with uh, when we do look up the F, the F critical uh, we need to know what this degrees of freedom are within groups uh, within groups degrees of freedom and between groups degrees of freedom and those numbers come from the textbook if you look at the textbook on page 356 we see that the uh, uh, it explains it here, but the within groups degrees of freedom is the is the number the total number of um, of of observations here, which is n, and that's actually when you count up when you count up all these one two three four times ten is forty, so that's forty uh, minus the number of columns. So 40 minus 4 is 36. That's where this uh, 36 comes from here. And then the between groups is simply the number of columns minus 1. So um, when we look up uh, the actual F, the F, uh, the critical F value, that's on page 526, 526. This is the, these are the uh, critical values of F, uh, 0 0.05, and we are looking at, uh, let's see, degrees of the numerator is 3, 3 degrees of freedom, and uh, the denominator is um, 36. So you go look, look down 3, 36, right here, so that would be between 2.9 and 2.8 maybe it's um, 2.88 or something let's go look and see what uh, we have here it's 2.86 okay so that's where this F, F critical number comes from and this F uh, this F is 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 computed from the, the values here one thing I would like to show you uh, we we have actually done the created the the, the numbers here, this, the analysis here using Excel. If we if we use pH stat instead, click add-ins. 
pH stat and we go to multiple sample tests, one way analysis of variance, and this thing pops up. And we do, we do the same thing. The group data cell range is A1 through D11. And we can put here um, golf balls. And uh, let's let's do the Tukey Kramer procedure. Click here. This thing pops up. Uh, we're supposed to enter in a, the Q statistic, and that's actually for Tukey Kramer. Click OK, and and uh, we'll get to this. But if we look at the ANOVA here, which is produced by the uh, pH stat, we notice that these calculations here uh, have formulas behind them. Whereas when we look at the analysis of variance table here that Excel produces, these are all just constant values. See, so it doesn't really help us help our understanding at all. Uh, this does, though. We see that F is computed from D13 over D14, which is the mean square between groups over the mean square within groups. And these uh, these values here are computed are computed from uh, you know, B B13 uh, B13 over C13, which is the sum of squares divided uh, over the degrees of freedom, and so on. We can see that. We can see how the p-value is calculated. There's actually an Excel formula for that, uh, which which looks up p, the uh, p-value from for the F distribution. Okay. Uh, so uh, what's next here? Uh, so so we can conclude that we can reject the, the, the null hypothesis, therefore the alternative must be true in the, that there is a difference. So the next question is... Question B. If the results in A indicate that it is appropriate, use the Tukey Kramer procedure to determine which designs differ in mean distances. Okay, we've done that. We, uh, I, sh I showed you how to Calculated with pH stat, we still need to look up the Q statistic, though. That we need to fill in the Q statistic right here. So let's look that up. And that is on page 530. 530. And we have values of Q. Uh, alpha is 0 0.05, that's what we want. And we can look back here and see that the degrees of freedom that they, they give it to us, 4 and 36. So let's go back here when we look at degrees of freedom, 4, 36. So it's somewhere between 3.79 and 3.84. Uh, let's do, uh, let's do uh, 3.82. That looks pretty good. 3.82. So we can put right here. 3.82 and we get the tables uh, the table is filled in here and Tukey Kramer tells us that all the pairs if you look at all the combinations of pairs all the different ways that you can choose two from four you get uh, seven ways here uh, each pair is, is uh, significantly different, or each one is significantly different than the other, except for one and four. One and four is this 201 and this 200. Okay, so those two are not significantly different. But to be honest, if you look at this, everything else is. So that means that um, uh, the the farthest traveling golf ball design was three here, which was 227 yards, and then. Uh, the one shorter, uh, uh, the next one was this 218, and that's two and three, and we see there is a significant difference between two and three. The means are different, and then after that, it's two and one, and uh, that's there's a significant difference there, and uh, two and four, of course, significant difference. Uh, it's just uh, one and four that are not different. So. Uh, we can conclude that um, uh, I 
think we can conclude that that design number three is is the best and uh, travels the, the farthest uh, as far as distance goes and design two would be second best okay let's look at the third question here question C evaluate whether each of the four sets of data look normal and whether they are equally variable if an assumption matters and you are unable to show it is satisfactory explain how this might affect your results and conclusion okay let's look at uh, let's go back here and let's let's calculate um, some descriptive statistics so we can decide whether or not for example the data is normal uh, and let's look at the variance too so uh, we can use Excel or PHSTAT to compute the descriptive statistics I guess I uh, I guess I like PHSTAT I'm going to use PHSTAT descriptive statistics and I'm going to go to the descriptive summary and uh, this thing pops up and uh, so my raw data range will be these four columns uh, multiple groups unstacked and I will put a title of golf ball designs and click OK and we end up with these this table here and we see that if we look at the skewness and kurtosis, we see that design one, that looks normal. They're both between minus one and one. Same with design two, same with design three, and same with design four. So it looks like all four of the, the groups are normal. Okay, uh, regarding variances now, uh, we, we just uh, determined that our, our data is, is is normal but for variance we, we see there is quite a significant difference in variance uh, standard deviations there's this two times rule which says that uh, that a standard deviation uh, one standard deviation can't be more than twice twice another however if we go back and we look at the rule the rule on page uh, 359 for one way ANOVA and uh, we we need to make sure these conditions are are these assumptions uh, are our met uh, randomness and independence we have to make sure our samples are are, are random uh, normality we've just confirmed that and the last one here um, uh, homogeneity of variance uh, it turns out that if we have equal sample sizes in each group then uh, our F distribution is not seriously affected by unequal variances so, so in our case, uh, evaluating uh, whether uh, our assumptions are valid, um, uh, the data is normal, and we don't really have to worry about uh, they're they're not being equally variable. So I think that's uh, so. I think we've taken care of uh, question C. The last question here. Question D. What golf ball design should the manufacturing manager choose? Explain. Uh, I would uh, choose, for the reasons we've stated earlier, I would choose design three because there is such a significant difference between three and the other two. Uh, the variances between uh, the other, the, the three that we're, we're looking at are, are equal, so uh, it's, it's valid to look at the, at the, at the, at the, uh, the, the differences between the means, and so um, I would conclude. Uh, I would recommend uh, golf ball design number three. Okay, so uh, in the next video we will do problem number two. So stay tuned.